Hi, my name is Daryl, and this is another Fit Tip of the Day. In my last video blog, I discussed the feeding cycle and the key players in the appetite control system. As you recall, I talked about galanin, norepinephrine, neuropeptide Y, cortisol, and the hunger hormones grenaline and leptin. Today, I'd like to talk about these chemicals in more detail and how they relate to fat metabolism. As you can see, I have this big giant chart here, and I'm going to go over it right now. So let me step into it. Yeah, that's nice. Here is a basic fat cell. A, fa a fat cell has two purposes. One, to release fat, and two, to store fat. Leptin and galanin play a big role in the satiety process of the feeding cycle. Here's how a fat cell works. If the fat cell is empty and there's no fat, there is no leptin. So therefore, the hypothalamus is signaled to release galanin. Once galanin is released, cravings to eat fatty food increases. So then the person will then eat or consume fatty foods. The fat will travel down through the digestive system and it will either be digested or converted into energy, or it will be stored in the fat cells of the body. Which route the fat takes is dependent on the level of the UCP2 gene. The UCP2 gene is a protein that controls the mitochondrial-derived oxygen synthesis. The more oxygen that is derived, the greater the fat metabolism. So people who have a high level of the UCP2 gene tend to be very efficient at burning fat and, and maintaining a healthy body composition. While people who have a low level of the UCP2 gene tend to store excess amounts of body fat due to their insufficient mitochondrial-derived oxygen synthesis. This is a key component in the obesity problem. The fat that is not converted as energy gets stored as fat, filling up the fat cells again. So it's a continuous cycle. The galanin cycle is shut off once fat reaches the pancreas. When the pancreas is aware of what is going on with the fat in the blood system, it will release entrostatin. Entrostatin is a pentapeptide that suppresses the feeding cycle, shutting it off. It essentially helps turn off the cravings for fat, ending the eating sequence. Now, if the fat cell is full, then there is enough leptin present and the need to eat is turned off. Leptin binds to the neuropeptide Y neuron of the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus. This binding neuronal relationship reduces appetite. And this is what causes satiety or suppressing appetite and why people don't want to eat, uh, especially um, if they have been skipping meals for so long. Normal leptin levels will help keep the feeding cycle balanced. Leptin will help alert the brain to release chemicals to help convert fat into usable energy or to store it. So it will actually activate the gallon process again. However, if there is an imbalance in the body where there is an overabundant storage of fat, then leptin levels will become very high. Depending on the locking effect that leptin has on the fat cell, exercise and the increase of skeletal muscle metabolism can help utilize the fat from the fat cells, regulating body composition. The muscle machinery must be developed through the correct physiological pathways to increase the power and efficiency of the fat burning enzymes. This process can take several months or even years to reach its fullest capacity. 
But once the cellular machinery is working at full capacity, fat metabolism can be improved much better as well as more efficient throughout the years. Another problem associated with appetite is that many people who are constantly skipping meals or depriving their body of the essential nutrients will promote the increase of circulating ghrelin in their bloodstream. Ghrelin is an appetite regulating hormone. It increases the desire to eat. It also stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to secrete growth hormone. Growth hormone is an anabolic hormone that helps in the production of nutrient metabolism, cellular reproduction, and cellular growth. High levels of ghrelin in the bloodstream will make a person constantly craving food. Overeating is usually the result. Now if a person is leptin resistant, meaning that the fat cells won't release leptin and the ghrelin levels are high then the shutoff sequence of the feeding cycle will be out of balance. This person will be in a constant state of wanting to eat all the time. This is why so many people go on a drastic diet or exercise program tend to have a tough time keeping the fat off because of the damaged hormonal signaling system. People who lose a staggering amount of weight, say 50 to 100 pounds, will also increase their ghrelin levels. They will always be hungry and in order to turn off the sequence, they must go back to eating large amounts of food. Unfortunately, this process can never be turned off unless there is a drug that can be taken to reduce the effects of ghrelin. So in other words, these people are constantly hungry all the time. Eating is a normal physiological need for human survival. However, in order to maintain a healthy body composition, it is necessary to adhere to a regular feeding pattern that doesn't compromise the hormonal balance of the body. Once the hormonal sequence is damaged, then fat loss becomes very difficult and this is a big concern for most of the population. If you have any questions about today's video blog, please feel free to email me. You can find my email address on my website at www.darylconant.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.